Well, I'd uh, really like to welcome Bishop Laverde to offer us a closing reflection on seeking the face of Christ. Bishop, welcome. Well, dear brothers and sisters, I'm really pleased that we could be together this, this morning to reflect on the year of mercy, but even more importantly, on the reality undergirding that, which is God's mercy itself. And uh, we've heard, you know, at the beginning that some people thought that maybe this jubilee is a year-long picnic. Well, it won't be that, but what will it be this holy year? Well, it will depend first, of course, on the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if we're open to his guidance but also to our own participation in that year of mercy. The Holy Father tells us that um, it is a special time for the church, a time when the witness of believers might grow stronger and more effective. So I would like to outline just briefly as a way of summary, three areas for us to consider and also in which to be involved. The area of the parish, because that's where each of you lives, in some parish. The area of our diocesan ministries, which is, has a central headquarters where you and I labor every day at the chancery. And then briefly our own individual lives. So let's take a look at the parish. How will the people of God formed in each parish, how, how will each of those groups of people observe the Jubilee? Well, there are different outward ways to do that. We heard about pilgrimage, and um, whether that would be to go to Rome or to come to our own cathedral. And as Father De Laurenti mentioned, the Holy Door will be blessed and opened on that third Sunday of, of Advent. And uh, I hope many of you will come and walk through the door of mercy to receive mercy. We also heard about the Holy Father's great largesse and offering many opportunities to gain indulgences. I think we need to understand the rich meaning of indulgence and how that can, those can be applied to ourselves personally or to the deceased. The Holy Father mentioned that the theme of mercy needs to be proposed again and again. And so as you and I go through these more external ways, whether you have pilgrimage, gain indulgences, we'll be reflecting more on this theme of mercy. But there's also within the parish the celebration of the sacraments. And among those sacraments, there's the one that we can popularly call, although it's not official name, the sacrament of divine mercy, which is penance, reconciliation. And if it's one sacrament Catholics are usually shy away from, it's that one. Uh, where on the other hand, it is such an abundance of mercy and welcome that we receive. Isn't it interesting? The thing we, we run away from and are afraid of is the one thing that would bring us great, great peace and freedom and a new beginning. You may have been struck as I am, you know that when Matthew was converted, when he made his confession, what did he do? He threw a party. I've often thought, you know, after every confession, we go home and throw a party. Well, that may not be practical, but you ought to go home skipping anyway, joyful. So I know in many parishes there are really good opportunities to celebrate the sacrament of penance. A number of our parishes, I think a good 30 of them, have continued the practice that we all do together in, in Lent on Wednesdays. In Lent, as you know, leave the light on and uh, the, the light is on for you and some parishes have continued that not only for Lent but throughout the year. So I just am hoping that 
that kind of an opportunity or others will be affordable uh, to all of our people within each parish. And then in terms of parish too, but it also fits into our own um, individual lives, that we'll be having a greater catechesis on the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. We, we heard about them today in great detail. We have a little card to remind us of them in our, in our uh, packets that we can slip into our wallet. Or, uh, but how do we practice them? It, it might be very well for us to consider what something the Holy Father suggested to young people that they would choose one or other of those works of mercy and do one um, at least once, one, choose one of them and do it during a whole month. Or if you want to be more varied for a whole week and then try a different one. And then in terms of Eucharistic adoration, um, Art mentioned so beautifully, you know, none of this is gonna happen well if it's not rooted in something other than ourselves. We need to be rooted in the Lord. Otherwise, all these wonderful movements that occur, they fizzle out because there's not enough energy in the human person to make them last. We need that transforming energy that comes from the Lord. And again, in lots of our parishes, there are opportunities for adoration. Again, I hope those opportunities will be extended. Those are just some ways in the parish in which I hope there'll be greater opportunities for us to experience and extend mercy. And then in terms of our own uh, um, work at the chancery, every office in one way or other will be doing things through that prism of extending mercy. And so many have already um, begun to, uh, to uh, have practical ways. Uh, yesterday I was with our young people. Uh, it was just a marvelous rally. Um, I think it was one of the largest crowds we've ever had. Is that right, Kevin? Is it one of the largest, anyway? And um, they were always alive. Young people, young people make me come alive. I always feel 50 years younger when I'm with them. But, um, or 75, maybe. Um, <laughs> but their theme is show no mercy, which I want to expand upon a little bit later. But there are different departments who have taken that theme and woven it into different, different wordings. But beyond the wording is a determination, a direction, an incentive, a motivation for moving forward. And I hope that we can give to our parishes, because that's why we exist, to help them come alive, different concrete ways of living out this year of mercy. Sara mentioned in the packets, there's a long, long list of some possibilities either thieves or things that various departments are doing. So I want to encourage you in that and have you, you know, remember as you go about duties that, yes, are often, you know, the same, that you might see doing them through a different lens, that what you normally do and, and need to do will be caught of colored and transformed by the notion of how is this conveying mercy? How is this allowing mercy to be alive? How is this a concrete sign of that mercy that God gives us that we're to pass on? And then if I could spend just a few minutes in our own lives, we have to be involved in this year of mercy. It's not enough to say, well, the parish as such, or not enough that we as an office are offering practical ways of assistance and encouragement and enablement. But how are we ourselves personally? Because if we're not involved, again, it'll be kind of fake. In, in the 
letter the Holy Father uh, gave us announcing the Year of Mercy with that interesting name, the Bull of Indiction. I always think that's a very interesting name. The history of that is fascinating. But, um, and I don't know it all. I'm sure Father De Laurenti could give us a long explanation of all that. But in the Bull of Indiction, toward the end, actually in paragraph 25, the Holy Father says that the church, if she's to be credible, has to be a convincing herald of mercy. And that image has really captured my attention. In fact, it was the, con it was the central image I used with our high school students at each of their opening masses this fall when I preached with them to them. But I'd like to use that with us too. How are we to become a convincing herald of mercy? It's, the Holy Father gave us a privilege, in a sense, to be such, but also a challenge. Uh, well, I'd like to unpack that by borrowing from the Office of Youth Ministry show no mercy. Now, as I said to the young people yesterday, because they're far quicker than ever I've ever been, but, uh, and they know what that, they know what it means, but if you say it quickly, show no mercy, it, it can sound like the opposite of what we're talking about until you take the word no and spell it. K-N-O-W. So it doesn't mean don't show mercy. It means manifest mercy. But it's interesting. So let's talk about that. Show no mercy. First of all, the word no implies experience. So to know is also to experience or as we heard this morning from Father De Laurenti, to receive. And show can also indicate to extend, to do, or um, to um, practice, as Father mentioned this morning. And it seems to me we must first know, experience, receive mercy, before we can show it, extend it, do it, practice it, ourselves. So let's look at that. Uh, let's look at each of those in our own lives. Surely we have already known and experienced God's mercy in many ways. But we need to be deepened in that experience. And how do we do that? Well, in one fundamental way, it's by keeping our eyes and hearts fixed on Jesus. Because in the opening sentence, and then further on in that opening paragraph of the Holy Father's announcement letter, he says, Jesus Christ is the face of God's mercy, of the Father's mercy. Well, the face reveals us. Jesus Christ reveals God's mercy, and that's what the Holy Father says in a few sentences thereafter. Jesus of Nazareth, by his words, his actions, and his entire person, reveals God's mercy. So if we want to experience mercy, the mercy that is of God, we need to be in touch with the one who makes that tangible and visible, namely the Lord. And we're talking about really the dialogue of prayer. That, that, that experience of being with the Lord. Whether that takes the form of words, whether it takes the form of reflection, takes the form of silent contemplation, takes the form of singing. However we express prayer, prayer is being and listening to dialogue with the Lord. Now our lives are very frenzied and hectic. Every one of us, me included, but every one of us has a frenzied life. 
What makes it frenzy varies for each one of us. It's not just the work we might do, you know, in our employment. It's all those other demands and responsibilities that come with, first of all, just being human, but also having a particular vocation. I don't know about you, but I, I could get up at six o'clock in the morning and go to bed at one o'clock in the next morning and just never stop. Well, that's not good to do. I'm not advising that any of us do that, let alone me. But the point is, we, we could just be frenzied every moment. And so I think we have to honestly admit, if we're going to wait to find time for God, it won't happen. You have to make it. There has to be a, a, a determination. So I, I plead with each of us, with myself included, we have to make time to be with the Lord. It always have to be a long, long period. You know, I've always said in spiritual direction, if you haven't been making any time with the Lord, don't say, well, I'll begin with an hour. That will never do it. You'll just never get there. It's much too long. You know, I didn't learn to ride the bike well you know, perfectly the first time I got on the bike. <laughs> you should have seen me. Well, I won't go into that. But it was a pretty messy learning experience. I have a scar to prove it. So it takes time. So don't begin with the long to begin. But you know, we find out soon, really, that when we spend time with the Lord, it pays off in high dividends, big time. So after a while, five minutes isn't enough. It's like when you have a, you know, a nice, a nice dessert. Well, a little piece, yeah, we should all have a little piece, but oh, it's good. I could have a little more. <laughs> and that's how it is with the Lord. So dialogue with the Lord, and then we meet him in those sacramental moments, again, to point to confession, but Eucharist. I don't know if we realize how how deeply personal our taking part in the Eucharist is. Because it, it, is, it is the unique way in which Jesus meets us. Indeed, the community becomes one with us. And then there's that, the whole experience of being with the Lord in adoration. You might remember St. John Paul II, just before he died, issued a document on the Eucharist. One of his most beautiful um, phrases in it was saying that as we pray, as we before the Lord, it is as if we were listening to his voice. And we, uh, he said we need to be patient to listen to his voice and has it were sense the beating of his heart. A beautiful, beautiful way of expressing prayer. He would sense the beating of his heart, the heart being the symbol, expression of love. So we need to know, experience for ourselves the mercy of God. Then we can show it, we can extend it, we can do it, we can practice it. And then many, many, many concrete ways, all of those spiritual corporal works of mercy, yeah. Yesterday afternoon, the young people didn't have a little card that I gave out. So I gave them a homework. I told them, go home for your homework and uh, look it up. There are seven in each. But that's not all I want you to do for your homework. After you look them up, do one or other. Well, now we don't have to look them up. We've had them before us uh, on, the, on the screen. We have, But there is a way to be engaged in doing mercy. All the many ways that art put before us, those five arenas with all of it, each with its many subsections. Um, Holy Father, too, mentioned some other ways besides the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. He said, uh, what about overcoming jealousy and envy? You know, those are two, uh, two um, sentiments that lots of people struggle with, you know? We do. You know, we look around, we see other people, and sometimes we get jealous or envious. 
Did you hear yesterday's gospel? That was that was James. That was you know James and John were pretty bold. It's a, it's a marvelous uh, incident. You know there they were. They 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 were pretty pretty bold. I mean really imagine. Go up to say to now listen teacher. We want you to do whatever we ask. Is that interesting? Not to whatever. Oh well. If I came to you and said do for me whatever I ask you, well you probably say, oh. What's, what's that going to be? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. But, you know, and then, of course, Jesus tells them that, well, <laughs> do they know the cost? Oh, yeah, they said. Well, he said, oh, yeah, you know the cost. But, but it's not mine to give you. But what did the other ten do when they heard all this? Ah, they were jealous and or envious. <laughs> it's a pretty deep-rooted human experience. Holy Father says, you want to show mercy? Try to overcome those feelings in dealing with others. Or the whole notion of forgiving the people who were, you know, we're human, we're not perfect. We can hurt one another. Sometimes unintentionally, but sometimes intentionally. You know, when you're, when you're really mad at someone for something, it's all the more true for those who um, are married, you just know where to aim the ammunition. You just know it. Gotcha. And for the moment, we feel good. And then, of course, later we say, oh, what a fool I was. That, that wasn't nice. But we do hurt one another. So we need to, first of all, I think, forgive those who hurt us and ask those whom we have hurt for forgiveness. Some of the ways Holy Father mentioned in, his, in, the, in the letter of how we show, extend mercy. And again, there are many, many other ways in each of those two ways, but I was just fascinated by the theme, show no mercy. So let us do the same with our young people, as I encouraged them yesterday to do. I hope... Um, my brothers and sisters, that the Jubilee year will be for each of us really a time of great grace, great favor from the Lord for ourselves that we may be restored through mercy and that all those whom God wants us to reach will be likewise restored through our efforts. Because as the Holy Father says again, we have the urgent need to proclaim God's mercy and to introduce everyone to the great mystery of God's mercy by contemplating the face of Christ, opening our hearts to those living on the fringes of our society. And sometimes when I think of the fringes, there are those physical fringes, you know, people who live far away or in terribly uh, economic circumstances. And I think of people who are fringes because they're emotionally suffering. That's another fringe. Or those who are spiritually suffering. That's another fringe. Can we reach out to them? Because they may not be physically far away. They may be very near us and yet far in those arenas. Anyway, may this be a great year of favor for us as a diocese, as God's people. And know my prayer for you, and I hope you'll be praying for me. So, go forth. Show no mercy in its real sense.